All right, it looks like we have a few viewers. I am Julie Baldino, and I'm the owner and managing broker at Front Door Realty. And I'm here with Mel Fagan from Element Home Staging. And today we are going to be talking about staging on a budget and the little things that you can do to get your house ready for sale without spending a ton of money. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, Mel. Um, just, I'd love it if you tell us a little bit about yourself first and your company, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, so I'm the founder and lead designer at Element Home Staging. Um, my background is actually in advertising and marketing um, in the Portland area. Um, that uh, that part of my life was just a little unserving for me, and I wanted to open up my own business and um, and design people's homes and stage stage homes so that you all can sell your homes faster and above asking price. So it's definitely a passion of mine to reach out to my community and meet and greet you all and, and help you sell your homes faster. So um, with that, I wanted to give you some tips for how to stage your home on a budget because I know that home staging can be um, can be expensive. And if, if you don't have the budget to quite hire a home stager like me, um, there are always ways that you can, um, that you can uh, clean up your home and get it ready for its showing. So I'm going to go through a few tips I have for you all. Um, the number one tip is going to be decluttering your space. So I'm sure if you're working with a realtor, your realtor has probably already told you to declutter your space. But what does that really mean? Um, decluttering really means to just look at your home from like an outside perspective and literally everything on your surfaces like if you you know i'm looking i'm here in my home office room i have like jewelry and candles and you know all kinds of stuff on my dresser if i was showing my home i'd want to take all of that out um, and just you know put it in drawers or something and clean it up really nicely wipe down all surfaces so um, if you have notebooks out clean that up um, especially like your living areas, like your kitchen and your living room area is probably, you know, like most of us that live in our homes are cluttered with mail and, you know, magazines and things like that. So take all of that and, you know, decide what, what you absolutely need to live with and what can be stored away. Um, even on your, in your kitchen counter spaces, um, taking out um, kitchen appliances and putting those away is a really good idea to just to clean off the surfaces and make it um, <clears throat> make it really nice and clean. Um, okay, so that's tip number one. Um, ask, the second thing, can I ask you a quick yeah, question on decluttering? Because this comes up a lot, and we were actually talking about this at our meeting the other day. Personal photographs we always caution people to put personal photographs away for a couple of reasons. You want a buyer to walk into your home and be able to envision living there, right? And the other thing too is for is kind of a safety protocol because the digital photography that we use is really high quality and so and your pictures are going on the internet. So if we capture photographs of your family or your partner or your grandkids, um, keep in mind that those may end up on the internet and you might not want them there. So um, that's one thing that I always tell people is the personal photographs should definitely be put away. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really, really important thing. Um, okay. So, and then the, the next little tip I have for you is um, to take a look at your home decor. Like all of this, you know, doesn't really cost you anything. Just look at your home decor. Look at mirrors, for example, where are they hanging? Um, you you want to have your mirrors reflecting back things that you want more of. So mirrors that are um, looking at your living area. Uh, mirrors that are looking at your bed or something. Um, you don't want mirrors that are facing doorways. Um, you, want, you might want them like next to a doorway, but definitely not facing a doorway, um, should never be facing. Um, you also wanna make sure with the mirror specifically that they're not hung too high, because um, it kind of represents like looking upwards, um, like you're never measuring up, uh, that can make people feel uncomfortable. Like that so, one. Yeah, make that sure. <laughs> I don't know if you stand up there, how's that? 
<laughs> I can't see myself, but I'm short. <laughs> so. Um, and all your paintings and everything, all your um, artwork, you want that to be at eye level, not hung too high. Like, especially if you have uh, vaulted ceilings, a lot of people end up hanging their artwork a little too high for you to really look at it. Um, so just making sure that it's at uh, about eye level is a, is a good way to rearrange your decor. Um, and then re reorganizing it in a way that it doesn't look too cluttered. Um, you know, so evening out your space. Um, another thing that you can do is you can go to Home Goods if you feel like you don't have matching decor. Um, you can you can go to Home Goods is a really, you know, inexpensive place to just buy like a couple of bases. Um, and you can you can use a color scheme. So you can get like blue vases and a blue throw and put that on your couch um, so that everything kind of matches and you have um, continuity throughout your space. Um, so the living areas are really something that you want to focus on. Um, a lot of people like to spend a lot of time in the living areas. So looking at your couch, do you have a bunch of throws on your, on your couch or pillows that are, you know, a little, uh, you know, like, so, I don't know, like they're not fluffy enough or something like that. Uh, you can go to Home Goods and get pillows for your space. They don't cost very much money throws, um, kind of even out, even out the space there and make it look really cozy. Um, if you have too many throws, an easy thing to do is get, um, get like a ladder. You've seen like those cute ladders that you can put the throws on, or you can put them uh, in like a storage bin, like a wicker basket or something like that to make it look really cute. Another tip for you is removing or fixing anything that is broken. This is a big one. A lot of us can get used to the things in our house, like a broken clock or a piece of furniture that has a cracked leg on it or something like that. You can get used to those things when you live in your space. But when people are walking through your home, you want to make sure that everything is in tip top shape, that there's nothing that is representing brokenness in any way. Like everything must be fixed or tossed out. Um, another tip on decluttering. Um, another tip I have for you is creating an inviting entryway space. Um, this can start from the curb. So if you just walk outside your home and you look at your house from the curb and you see, okay, what's, what's going on with my house? Is there a clear walkway to get up to my house? Um, so you might have to trim some bushes or move some rocks out of the way or even lay some rocks to create a nice pathway to the door. It's gotta look really nice leading up to the door. So with that, another tip that you can do on a budget is you can paint your door. A really good color for a door is red because it represents success um, and it invites a lot of like strong, good energy into your home. So just painting your door red uh, or, you know, and if you don't like red, any other color, but just making sure that your door really stands out so people wanna walk towards it um, will help you out with, uh, with getting the right buyers in your home. Another thing on the entryway, sorry, I keep interrupting you, but this popped in my head, is sweeping the porch. A lot of people don't sweep their porch and walkway, and it just looks really nice when it's freshly swept. So not only doing that before you put your house on the market, but also before showings, I think is helpful and makes it look really tidy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, sweeping it out, um, it's fall, it's a really good time to sweep away all the spider webs. Uh, make it cute, you know, put some pumpkins there and a nice welcome mat, um, hang a wreath on your door. Those are all really inexpensive ways to just brighten up that, that entryway space and make it look really inviting. Okay. So then when you walk through the door, you know, again, you're, you're looking at your house, you know, as if you were, you know, a potential buyer. So you walk through the entryway of your door and look around, like how does it feel when you stand in the entryway? Are you looking at clutter? Are you looking at a bunch of shoes? Uh, are you looking at, you know, hanging coats? Uh, clean all of that up, make it look like a really inviting, just serene space that you're walking into. 
because the people touring are home when they walk through that and they want to feel like refreshed, like oh, I'm coming home from the day and I feel good just being in my home. It's not, you don't want to, nobody wants to walk into clutter or a mess or, you know, some, a picture that's hanging sideways or something. So just clean all of that up and, you know, make it look a little refreshing. Um, you can even put like a, at a home goods again you can find like a really inexpensive mat to put in on uh, the floor when you walk through the, the doorway on the other side so you want you know you could have one on either side um, the entryway uh, doormat and then a, a little like carpeted mat on the inside um, that'll make it feel a little bit more cozy that will also keep people from tracking in dirt and you know muddy feet when they're showing it Hopefully they're wearing booties, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> want to avoid, uh, yeah, I want to avoid any dirt coming in your home, especially right now, you guys. All right. Um, and an another thing that you can do is if all of this just feels a little bit too overwhelming, you can always hire a home stager to do a consultation. Um, I do consultations. Um, my fee is $150 for the consultation. I'll come to your home and just look around and uh, give you some advice that's specific to you. Um, and then if you do feel like you want to use my furniture for any of your spaces, I'll waive that consultation fee and wrap it into the, uh, the staging fee. Cool. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, when you do, when you come in to do the consultation, and I think this is important for people to know, will you help them work with their own stuff and then give them a, an idea of maybe what they should add? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think the best stagers work with what you do have in your home. So absolutely, I would come in and, and work with what you have and give you some advice on uh, maybe placement of, of decor, rearranging your furniture so that it, it flows easily and so there's enough space for everyone to walk through the home in, a, um, in an easy way. Um, and then just give you tips on additional things that you can, additional decor that you can purchase. Um, but I'll definitely work with what you have and, and give you all tips on specific to your home on how to work with what you have. And um, you mentioned home goods. That is a great place to buy an expensive home decor. I love that store. <laughs> I'm probably in there <laughs> once a week uh, yeah. <laughs> because they do. They have really fun, colorful items that are really super inexpensive. So that's a great place to go for that. Um, the other question I had too was the for the bedrooms. Um, mm -hmm. What do you recommend in the bedrooms, particularly the master bedroom? What do you see commonly, I guess? And then what, what are the common corrections that you would have to make to a master bedroom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I'll see master bedrooms with, um, without a rug underneath the, um, underneath the bed, um, especially in... It's more important when there's hardwood floors, you wanna have a rug underneath the bed. So that's the first thing that I would notice. Um, Cause it, the rug just kind of anchors in the space and makes it feel more cozy when the floor is hardwood. Um, another thing is usually, you know, when I'm touring homes, people are good about making up their bed, um, but always make sure that the bed is made and that you have nice fluffy pillows on your bed. Um, uh, clean clean it out like sometimes there can be odors like in in the bedroom so um, if you have like a candle diffuser um, put that in your room um, just to kind of air out the space and clean it up um, open up your windows maybe uh, you know make sure the carpets are all clean so you're you're kind of uh, getting those odors out and then there's there's um, sometimes a lot of clutter in the bedrooms just with clothes um people when they're touring homes they like to open up all your closets um and just see how much space is in there so um it's 
it's not a great idea to stuff things in your closet because it's going to make your closet space look a lot smaller and feel like there's not enough space in the home. So, you know, we're going into the autumn season. It'd be a good time to clean out your closet from all your summer clothes and just store those. Just take those out of the home and store them so you have enough closet space where it, it looks like, you know, okay, as a new person coming in the home, this is, there's a ton of space here. I can totally have all my things, you know, in, in this closet. I always tell people you're moving anyway, so you might as well start packing, right? You like yeah. depersonalizing, getting all your stuff out of there. You're taking it with you anyway. So the first step is just packing it all up. And just a, a quick story. I moved into a house um, temporarily while I had a house being built back in 2005. And it was a lot smaller than what we were used to living in. And we packed up everything that we didn't use every day and moved into this little tiny house. And it was amazing how comfortable we were with just the items that we use every day. And I ended up, when we moved into our new house, I pretty much got rid of everything that we had stored away because we didn't use it. So um, I think you'd be amazed at how little you actually use in your house and how much we accumulate. A lot of it can go away. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's, that's such, I mean, that's such an important tip just for life anyways. That, it is. You know, it just totally to declutter your life, you know, and you don't need all the stuff that you think you need. But, um, but definitely if you have a smaller space, um, having the, the seasonal items only um, is, is a big tip that'll, that'll change, change the game for you. Buyers also will look in your cupboards, your pantry, you know, so you want to have those all tidy, you know, and limit the amount of dishes you have. I mean, realistically, we don't, use a set of 12 dishes every day, right? So if there's four of you living in a house and you typically use four dishes, limit it to those and your four glasses that you use, just clean it all out. Cause I can't even tell you how many times a buyer has said to me, there's no storage in this house when there's a ton of storage, but the storage is just full. So they get the impression that there's no storage in the house. So your tip number one is probably like the most valuable. Um, and when I think about the, you know, 18 years of showing houses, that is probably the biggest deterrent is clutter and not having enough storage and a buyer feeling like they don't have enough space in the house. And it all has to do with the amount of stuff that is in the house. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just another note on that. I mean, I, I've been to houses that um, that the homeowners have said, oh, I decluttered and I cleaned. And then it's like the realtor and I get there and we're, we're like, you know, I think you need to do a little bit more. So listen to your realtor and your stager because they're not there every day where you are. I mean, we all have to realize like, you know, we can get used to things being the way they are. So if you have your realtor saying like, I, I know you've decluttered, but this needs to get decluttered a little bit more. Listen to them. They're the experts. They, they know. And know that we're not telling you these things to be mean because a lot of times it's hurtful to hear that, you know, your stuff has to go away. But we really just want to maximize your value in your house and get the as many people in the door that want it as we can. And um, we know from experience, you know, and from showing houses and hearing feedback, what works and what doesn't. So we're not doing it to be mean. We're just really trying to help. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, the goal is to get your house to sell faster and above asking price, especially in this market. Mm -hmm. so it's a really um, good I was going to see if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to throw a question in the comments for either me or Mel. I see somebody had a question and one of my agents answered it. So thank you for that, Michelle. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions for Mel, please let us know. And if you can't think of anything now or you think of any think of something later, we, you, you're welcome to post your question to the video and we'll do our best to answer you very quickly. Well, thank you so much, Mel. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Thank you. It was so fun. I hope you all got a lot of value out of this and you can follow me on Instagram or find me on Facebook. 
at Element Home Staging. Uh, my website is elementhomestaging.com. Um, so come and follow me for more tips and, um, and you can find me there if you, if you do need a home stager. Thank you, Mal. Thank you so much. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.